as you can see, Hellcats come with rear ultrasonics, but they don't have the front ultrasonics, nor do they have the front uh, collision warning or the front uh, parking sensors. My 300 had all of that, and yes, I'm gonna keep complaining because I feel it's my right to do so. But, uh, you know, there's was, there was so many features in that 300 that I'll tell you, if they made that 300 Hellcat, this car is going back. Because the thing about it is the 300 just gives you so much. It gives you so much. Second of all, I expect to see the front sensors. You see this piece of shit Ultima right there? What happens if I get too close to them? I expect to have front, look at that. You see that? I expect to have front sensors just so in case I get too close to one of these loser ass Ultimas that I don't hit him. When I'm parking, I expect to have, what is it called? I expect to have rear senses in the rear because I don't want to get close to anybody else. So I expect to have all that. I don't want to see anything less on that car. I hope you enjoyed those reposts as much as I did. Basically, when I first got my Charger Hellcat, one of my biggest complaints was the fact that it didn't have the exact same technology suite that my 300 SRT did. Front sensors in order to make sure that you didn't get too close to people when you were parking. And on top of that, it didn't have the adaptive cruise control, which they call um, colloquially as quote unquote the eyeball camera. So... The Charger, as many people have noticed, has gotten these inlets, these special inlets. Now, my guess is that what they were doing was because of the fact that they didn't have that technology on the previous Challenger and the previous Charger Hellcats, what they did was they put these inlets here in order to make sure that cooling comes in in the exact same manner that it does with the Dodge Demon. As you remember, the Challenger had one false intake where the uh where one of the headlights was supposed to be and the second one was a hole that gave it uh direct access to airflow the first challenger had it as one hole the demon and the newer wide body challengers switched that to dual holes so now they have two holes where they normally would have he headlights now, with the newest Challengers, some people don't like the hood, but one of the things that I recognized really quickly about the hood was that they were most likely going to need extra cooling because if they tried to bump power up, they always, what they do is they try to make sure it has as much cooling as possible, and they also try to make sure they can overcool it. So if you have a car that has like a 600 horsepower uh, engine, they want to make sure it has 200 more horsepower worth of cooling, so that let's say that this car can cool up to 800 horsepower's worth of heat dissipation. Bottom line is this. On this newest picture of the Challenger Hellcat 2019 caught in the wild, you can clearly see, if you look in the lower grill, that it has the eyeball camera. If you look even closer, you can also probably see that it has ultrasonic sensors in the front bumper. Finally, we're getting the ultrasonic sensors and the adaptive cruise control. The Jeep Trackhawk has the ultrasonic sensors and it has the uh, adaptive cruise control. Now, whatever the going rate is for those two parts to be on your safety tech package, you can guess that this challenge is going to be more expensive. If it comes with a wide body kit, it's going to be a $7,000 edition. And if it comes with that sensor suite, most likely it'll be a thousand to thousand five hundred dollars, maybe even two thousand dollars edition. But finally, anybody who missed those features on their Hellcats, if you're ready to trade in, if your lease is ending, whatever, now you can finally get those two features. And um, I'm really, really happy to see them. People with Challengers and Chargers are about to be extraordinarily pissed off because Chrysler FCA has done what they basically did to the Chrysler 300. Back when I got my 300, uh, 2012 or whatnot, it was um, a duckbill spoiler on it, and it also had a more aggressive front end. When Chrysler redesigned the 300, they added that spoiler to the 300S, the regular models with the V6 and the V8 as part of an appearance package. And then they discontinued the SRT model in America. In Dubai and Australia, you could still get the SRT model. However, you couldn't get the mock shift stick that I had for my five-speed transmission. 
So that means that basically every single Chrysler 300 I see rolling around right now from a distance looks exactly like the 300 SRT8 because of that spoiler. And also some of the other additions like 20-inch wheels. But the newer wheels don't look as good as the wheels that I had because, you know, they were SRT wheels that you couldn't get with any other car. So now Chrysler FCA is introducing what's called the V6 Super Track Pack, which you've probably heard about. Uh, one of my biggest problems with the Dodge Charger was that unless you had the SRT model, you had an ugly grill because I never liked the SXT grill and I never liked the base model's grills. And on top of that, you didn't get a hood scoop. And I think that may have held some people who wanted a performance-looking car from getting it. Now, that didn't mean that you couldn't buy the car, like if you just wanted a V6 model and you didn't want to spend all the money on a V8. It didn't mean that you couldn't buy the car and you couldn't go out and get yourself a hood made by some company. Because there were a lot of charges that I saw on eBay where somebody did exactly that. They got like a V6, they got a V8, and then they got the Hellcat styled hood. And then they got it painted from eBay altogether. I think it was costing them about $2,000 as a mod. Now, the problem is you don't want to be caught out there rolling around in a V6 charger and somebody pulls up on you and says, yeah, do a burnout. And then they find out you only got a V6 because even though your car looked like a Hellcat on the outside, turns out that piece of shit was just a V6. So uh, you don't want to do that. You really don't want to do that. You, the last thing you want to do is get caught by the uh, Hellcat scouting patrol Nazis out there. Which I'm one of them, by the way, because if I catch you, you're getting put on freaking YouTube. So the V6 Super Track Pack adds this top hood scoop, just like you'd see on a regular SRT. You don't get the nostril negative air pressure vents on the sides like the Hellcat does, but you do get something that looks a lot better as a V6. That scoop... I don't even really know if you really need it because the Pentastar V6 doesn't build up enough heat to really even bother needing it. But it looks so much better that you can probably, you know, debadge it or even upbadge it. You can put 345 or whatever you want on the side, whatever displacement the uh, Pentastar is, because I've seen people do that with the V8s. But the thing about it is a lot of people who have SRTs, they're going to be really pissed off that you're buying a car that looks exactly like theirs and you don't really have a V8 under that hood. In fact, my car club team move over, they won't even allow you in the club unless you have a 6.1 SRT or unless you have a 6.4 SRT. So I assume some other clubs have similar rules. Now, the one thing that remains to be seen is whether or not FCA is actually going to make do with a Dodge Charger wide body Hellcat with this update for 2019. I really believe at this point that they kind of have to give us the wide body because if they're making V6 Super Track Packs, there's only one way to set the Charger Hellcat aside from the V6 at a distance with a glance. And I would assume that this is what they're just going to have to do because as far as I know, the Challenger wide body can only be purchased as a Hellcat. You cannot get it as a V8. And it would make a lot of sense that the Charger would share a wide body so that there was no way anybody could ever mistake that for anything less. And it would be far too expensive for an SRT owner or a V6 Super Track Pack owner to put a wide body kit on there. Like, even if they got it from Liberty Walk and they had it added and they had it painted, it still wouldn't look right because the tires wouldn't be as wide. So now they'd have to spend damn near $10,000 to get something that looked like the wide body charger Hellcat.